Well, good day, faith family, and uh, welcome to our panel. Uh, we, we covered 1 Peter chapter 2, 4 through 10. Uh, the, the title of this morning's sermon was God's Stone Building. And so we're going to just walk through some of the outline for the sermon and uh, then, then conclude. So uh, first, the first uh, statement, the first point that Kyle had this morning was God began his building project with a rejected cornerstone. So uh, my, my question for us, and I'll open with you, Mike, um, why did God choose what he knew would be rejected? I, you know, I don't know if I have an answer to that, although I do have, I understand that uh, as we go through Scripture, before we get to the New Testament, we see God do things that are different than the way that I would do it or you would do it. Uh, and and in, in this case, specifically, when he's talking about the rejected cornerstone stone being Christ, it's just interesting to, for me, especially to identify uh who I would be like. And the truth is, I wouldn't have seen Christ. I would have seen Christ, I think, more like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, unfortunately, because he wasn't what I would have expected. Mm. I had expected the, the, the heir of David and kick the Romans out and, and all those type of things. Mm -hmm. And yet, God's perfect plan was to be completely different, completely unexpected, and I, I, just, I just think it, that in itself is an amazing thing. But Yeah, well, that's great. Matthew, yeah. anything to add? You kind of alluded to this, but uh, God has a history of using rejected things mm -hmm. all throughout Scripture. If you look at, at, at Israel, Israel was the most insignificant little nation, and God chose to uh, work his plan of redemption through them. Uh, Abraham was not you know, this, this yeah. mighty king, mm -hmm. God chose to work through him. And you see that all through the scripture. So it actually it makes perfect sense when you think about it in, in light of, of the whole of scripture that God would choose uh, someone that we would not have looked at and thought that's our guy mm -hmm. uh, to, to bring about salvation. Yeah, great. No, thank you. That, that's, that's helpful. And uh, um, I, I, I liked just the... The look at that word rejection, meaning meaning that it, it just doesn't size up. <laughs> I think it was said yeah. it summarily, like it, in in Jesus' day, he didn't measure up. He didn't size up, which just, I, I think, just highlights how fallen and broken we are, uh, that we would not uh, size up the, the king of glory well. Mm. So... Um, okay, and then, and then another, another question, and this is from uh, the second point, was that uh, we, are, we are living, building material. So we're, we're referred to in Scripture as sons, as lambs, as the people of God, as living stones. And uh, that, that's like being dug out of a quarry, shaped by and uh, to the builder's purpose. And so uh, a part of that is that we're a part of a, of a priesthood, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what, what we discussed in in first Peter and that we offer now spiritual sacrifices as opposed to physical sacrifices so I just want us to just discuss like what what are those spiritual sacrifices what is what does that look like what are biblical examples of that um, Matthew if you want to start yeah. us so I think Kyle listed uh, a, a handful of uh, spiritual sacrifices, I think, from John MacArthur, some things that he had listed mm -hmm. out, and one that, that stuck out to me is, and, and as a music leader, this you know, it, these sorts of things always stand out to me. Um, but it's our praise. Mm -hmm. Our praise is is a form of spiritual sacrifice because we're we're directing uh, honor and worth that otherwise we would try to direct toward ourselves, and we're deflecting that away from ourselves and toward Christ. So, uh, in, in a sense, that is a a sacrifice that uh, that we are making, and as Christians, we're called to uh, continually um, make those sorts of sacrifices, draw um, uh, glory away from ourselves, and ascribe it to to Christ. Hmm. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, believe it or not, I was kind of thinking the same lines, and um, kind of going back to last week's sermon about the idols. But my my worship it will be directed at something, mm -hmm. and so to to purposefully direct that. At the true and living God uh, is pleasing to Him. That's our highest calling is, is to do that. And and then you know you went through. I, I didn't get them all. You said them so quick. I didn't get them yes, all written yep, down. Same, but I had the, here. <laughs> the body, um, good works. Obviously, we did the praise and prayers. Mm -hmm. I, I'd never. I don't think I'd. 
put a whole lot of thought into prayers being, obviously that says a lot about, you know, what I, th I think of prayer, but prayer being a, um, a part of that, uh, mm. a, a sacrifice to our, our God. And that's an amazing thing. Mm. Yes. Well, that's great. Yeah. And I, I thought of, and I wanted to, to look it up and, and read it uh, from, from Hebrews. It says, um, through him, through Christ, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Uh, Cause I, I think one in the, in those lists was, was converts. My, you know, we, we acknowledge yeah. God's name and all that we do and, and both uh, how we conduct ourselves and then, and then two unbelievers. So um, it, we, we, and we do that in a, priestly way <laughs> which is uh i'm kind of hard to get my mind wrapped around sometimes i don't always feel very I priestly know, know, yeah. <laughs> so but no great that was very very helpful thank you um and then and then the last point that uh well, really the last two points that kyle had in the sermon from first peter um point three was that uh we we have a theology of why some stones are used and others are not and then the fourth point was that we are included in this building project simply by the mercy of God. Uh, so, so my question is, is based on how Peter describes that there were some that stumble because they disobeyed the word because they were destined to do so. Um, and that the only way that we are brought in is by the mercy of God. How does this impact our faith? It should make us humble. That's the bottom mm -hmm. line. Because... Once again, all are stones, meaning all are dead. Mm -hmm. And by his mercy and his, his grace, he chose some to be living. But I, I, th I wanted something that really resonated with me out there was there are times that I don't, I feel insignificant in whether it's in church or the ministry that I'm attempting or whatever. And it really began, really at point two, it began to dawn on me that if I am, if, if you believe this, Mike, if you believe that you're a living stone and he is fashioning you into, uh, into this, that you are, in, you are an important part of, of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So they gave me a, um, it just gave me a sense of number one humbleness, like I said, and maybe in a different way, but but the fact that no matter what how we toil for the Lord, if no one ever sees it, if it appears to be a failure most of the time, or if not all the time, or what, that's that's not the case apparently. <laughs> that's mm, not yes. what I see here. So I have to. So this week, that is something that I need to preach to myself: mm -hmm. is that it, 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 I'm not insignificant as far as he's concerned. It's not to puff myself up, but we get discouraged, don't we? Sometimes it doesn't mm -hmm. turn out the way that we thought it would in, in ministry or, or whatever it is. Yes. Well, it's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I think the it's easy. The cultural trend, um, I think, in in the United States at least, is. Uh, toward and, and evangelicalism is toward man-centeredness. So everything mm -hmm. just seems to be driven in a man-centered way. And I think churches like ours and our congregation, we tend to like shy away from any uh, instance of, of man-centeredness. And I don't think that this text is teaching that at all. But uh, I think in our in our shying away from that, sometimes we forget that God did choose us, mm -hmm. yes. and that there there is uh, there is so much to. Um, that is so like, worship-inducing to me. And nothing is more humbling than this, this doctrine, this idea. Nothing has been more humbling in my life mm -hmm. than embracing the idea that God chose me and that I had nothing to do with it. Um, I think in the same way that uh, we don't, we don't uh, attain our own salvation, we can't lose it. And I think there's just so much comfort knowing that God chose us not because we had something to offer him, uh, mm -hmm. not because we had done something right, um, but because out of grace he chose us. And, and I love that quote. I, I couldn't quote it perfectly, but uh, where it talks about, you know, there's a lot of 
uh, uh, directions that people could go with this and a lot of debate and argument over um, exactly what this means. But uh, one thing is for sure that it will, it will be cleared up one day. And, and we certainly know that we didn't go and make this decision. God chose us. We didn't, we didn't choose him. That's true no matter which path you take on, on you know, the minutia of that, of that issue. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Yeah, I, the other day, <laughs> I don't know where she got it from because I don't think my wife or I told her our daughter, but uh, she said something about life not being fair. I think because she had to go to bed at, at like a reasonable <laughs> hour, and I was like, I'm I'm glad she's at least able to verbalize. I don't know if she knows what it means or not, yeah. but she's able to say it out loud. And it's like life's not fair. It doesn't feel good for you right now. And as I was reflecting on it, I was like, I'm so thankful to God that life is not fair. Because if it was fair, then, then I would be in hell. Mm -hmm. and, and it's out of God's mercy, it is sheer mercy, that uh, we can even think about these things, let alone uh, discuss them as, as believers together. So, um, all right, well, great. Well, Faith Family, thanks for tuning in. Uh, that's all we have for you today. Hope you have a great week.